So apparently it's Monday. So that means, as you can tell by the title of the video, okay, this is a top down analysis, future fire trading style on gold. Okay. So between now and the end of the video, my whole job is to show you how if I'm just waking up in the morning and I'm looking for what something is up to all the way. That doesn't mean I'm looking for just today or just this month. I'm looking overall, not just for profits, but I'm wondering where this shit is going in general. High time frame perspective, mid, all the way to low time frame perspective. All right. And so, long story short, when we're talking about a top down analysis, right? And what do I mean about um, where price is going? Oh, can't type today. All right, okay. We wanna know what price is aimed at all the way. The reason why I'm starting on a weekly chart and then going high to low is so you can understand like why something in the market looks like this. See that? Like compared to, um, My bad. A little run like this, or I hate this tool. <laughs> Let's copy it. Or we have a run like this. Okay. Now, mind you, being on a weekly chart is obviously like a um considered a higher time frame that when you have a definitive direction, you know, when we talked about um entry hacks right there will be an entry hacks video coming right after this video and so that's us talking about the higher time frame the way we are now and really really quick just because i'm thinking about it i'll show you exactly what i mean on uh the higher time frame entry hack real quick all right so when i'm on a weekly chart notice how what i said to you before was again it's not time frame specific but you want to be aware of being at a support system, being at a uh, being on a higher time frame, and knowing that you have a definitive target. So, for example, let's say you were down here, right? Now, why'd you? We see buy side liquidity, right? We see buy side liquidity. And these are the most abundant areas. I mean, that stick out like, like a sore thumb. Okay. But what I'm saying is, if you didn't have any perspective on this quite yet, right? This is why I say there's no difference when you look at structure on a certain time frame, PD arrays are time frame specific. So that means if I go to show you a weekly fair value gap that got tapped into and worked perfectly, right? This is the weekly fair value gap then. It's time frame specific. Don't talk to me about another time frame or a uh, 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 fair value gap and say, yo, did you see that fair value gap? And I'm like, dog, which one? It's 10 million in here. Right? Bro, it's going to be to the point where you're looking at certain setups. And do you see how, again, being on a weekly chart, I have these targets here. Again, if I was participating, and I'll actually make it easier for your eyes so you see what I'm talking about. All right. If you're participating from this fair value gap, 
you might have an understanding of where you're going for a mid to longer span of time. Literally. I bet. Let me hit the wood real quick. Got to be sure we hit the wood. It's like uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. 7.40. But let's say you find this higher time frame PD Ray, right? So that means, in my mind, every single week from Tuesday to Friday, my entire goal is to get here, 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 here. I'm not going to waste a lot of my time on the sell side when I know this run is potentially done. It just took out sell side liquidity, jumped into an imbalance. Then on top of that, watch this. So even on like the 81 on the weekly, this is really small. So you want to pop this up and see what we're working with. All right. And so before we go into what's already happening, but I'm just showing you like why the higher time frame plays the role the way it does because it's about not just coming on every fucking day bro just because i know you're an intraday trader and you trying to tell me uh hey i think the bias today is this the next day oh i think it's this you can just go look at a weekly chart and have the bias for like three months not really difficult if i'm honest now Look at this. This is uh, October 2022. All right. You complete this partition May of 23. Do you realize how easy this is? All you had to do was be at a partition or wait till you actually come back down into the gap. And now all of this is engineered above you. Whether you're looking at a dealing range or not, this is going to be a clean and clear clue. Watch this. And the reason why we hold and have shifted or shift things in general is because you're trying to give yourself a perspective of something, uh, even if the candles aren't there yet. So, for example, I say, hey, this fair value gap may lead you because there's nothing else really down there, right? And it's a clean and clear weekly fair value gap. It's not going to be ignored. Now, just for those in the back, right? Yes, it is. I knew you were going to complain about it. Yes, your fair value gap is in fair value gap. If you guys have trouble seeing the PD rates in the right spot, still, that means that you are still... um not flipping through your PO3s all the way and opening up your uh, point of view or your perspective. I had to jump to a 243 to show you that we're in this uh, fair value gap level. Okay. And watch. You see my point. You feel what I'm saying? It goes right from your fair value gap level where fair value gaps are supposed to work on the rebalance right off my fair value gap level. Okay. And you have another one, two, three weeks of straight upward motion. And you understand what your targets are. So every time you come down here, that's you that needs to be in buys, not sells. I don't give a fuck how low this thing goes for two weeks. You're going to operate those on scalping, but you're going to stay away from those cells until you get there. You're going to mostly buy it. Yeah, watch this. That's what ultimately leads us to greatness here. All right. That's why I wanted to break this time frame down first, but really quick what I'm also concerned about is where this thing is going right now so currently if I end up going to a 
bigger partition and just seeing what we're on. This is going to give you a perspective like, hey, are we macro bullish or are we macro bearish? What do you think? I'm going to just let you sit for about 30 seconds or 10 seconds and uh, let you look at what I'm looking at. See if you can find it. This is really clean. And it's interesting that however you go to look at this thing, right? Now, this is current. This is a current dealing range, okay? So, so far, we've had this uh, 2187 low. And what's interesting about that is we've been able to really get above and really start cracking through this 729. And so, Bobby, I had to hit the wood real quick. We're cracking through the 729, and so far, my favorite level, right? We're coming through a fair value gap. And right now, we should go a little high into this uh breaker level we already completed it but this is going to be new buy side liquidity all right now notice the angle of this okay before i even bring it down the time frame just look at the angle notice that this is like kind of like a a sharp angle right and so a lot of people say well damn like my liquidity void caused a fair value gap okay sure but this is why I talk about how price is fractal, all right? You can go to another partition and see exactly like what price was referring to. Yes, you're in a higher liquidity void once you get up here, which is the reason why it's able to spike and look, finish the 243 all the way. And so what's interesting about this is that you're at a shared high, all right? Now, watch this. You being at this shared high, once it breaks upwards above that, it's going to become a shared low. All right. Now, why did I say that? If it breaks above this high, it becomes a shared low. See what I mean? All right. Once this becomes a shared low, if you saw my uh, 729, right? And the high of the 729 is 3645. So let's do that. So come to your horizontal line tool and just pop in the coordinate. So um, 3645, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's all the way to fuck up there. All right. Let's get that now so far like i said when you have all of these shared highs shared lows right and right now we're playing off this level so that brings us down to the daily all right now mind you my guy all right i want you to make sure you're paying attention to what i'm trying to uh show you all right now we talked about uh this a lot First of all, when you go through a dealing range, you're trying to decide two things the first time you smack into it and it smacks all the way back down. Right. So, so far, we have some support from this uh, 729 liquidity void. We have a power of three liquidity here. Uh, we have this little imbalance here, which can be seen. Um, I don't want to half shift it now, but if I have shift it, this will be in a level where you like it a lot more. Now, outside of that, because I don't need that, but what I do need is to gain some context on um, these shared highs, shared lows. So that means there is a powerful move coming from right from this level. And I want you to be prepared for it. And so if you trade gold, the low is 26.73, okay? Now, not saying that we can't have lower objectives for a day or two days or maybe even a week. 
But my thing is, you need to overall stay uh, focused on buy so far. So us being in this current partition, the way we are, right? It's slightly inside of the one under us. That's why the body itself, right when it jumps over this high again, it'll be a uh, shared low. You feel me? Now, anyway, regardless of how we're looking at it, right? When you see this area that I just marked, it looks like, listen, fair value gap area on a premium. However, when we shift it up, right? That's where you saw how we were mostly uh, on that EXT level or right underneath it, right? That's fine. But again, like I said, if I ended up like downshifting this like real quick, um, let me see what I mean. Watch this. So now that's negative one. Now watch. Now, this helps with a lot of equilibrium type of uh, consolidation, but we just wanted to pull it down to see if we can see anything clean down here. And I don't see anything I like, but now so far, we're going to go back up. Okay. Now, mind you, we just completed a, a, a hole 243, so I understand that. It's going to give a measure of retracement. Um, we tapped this premium EXT level, but the way it's looking, again, with the 729, right? It's looking like this is just power through liquidity, so we need to ignore this sharp angle of us going through this. Now, the reason why I'm looking at this a certain way, though, is we want to know if this is like a straight continuation or do we have lower objectives before we get to a uh, higher one, right? And so that's when we want to see, realistically, let's turn these off, all right? And just really quick, just, just really quick, all right? I want you to notice this, all right? Now what we're gonna do, right? We're gonna section this off from, and like I said, we're doing a full, oh, uh, we can go to a weekly to do this actually, watch. So I need, exactly, I need 24 to 24, baby. So I need, dude, it's almost 2025. That shit is crazy to think about. All right, and then I could come in here and one day this and then move this back. So this is not like the first of, yeah. Oh yeah. Now watch, let's make some adjustments here all right now mind you what i'm doing is i'm showing you like the whole year you feel me right so when we're operating um some of these january to january we're trying to figure out right what is this thing up to and so when we put on our goal back level so far right like i said we're trying to figure out, does it look like it have, has room to continue up right from where we are, or do we need to go downside in the next week, two weeks, before we continue higher to our objective? Now, you see why this looks like power through liquidity instead of um, a major, major high. But again, maybe we want EXT again, or maybe it wants to be a... Um, it's definitely the building of buy side liquidity, but if this is in a breaker area, it's not um, impossible to see a a little chop fest, you know what I'm saying, between this and the mitigation block. Now, we already got majority of like the mitigation block starting to move a certain way, right? But realistically, when you're seeing this, um, I would like to see a breaker on the daily chart which is kind of like a, it will go like this, go up, back down, right into this little high here, because it's the one that's more abundant, and it will eventually lead higher, right? That's what I would like to see, okay? 
And look, when I show you the 729, 2187, these are already, again, shared lows. We're not getting back down there. I'm telling you that now. So we're not really coming to look for super, super lower prices. And again, all this uh, liquidity down here, long term. Long term. We're not just going to spike down there for no fucking reason. We're not doing it. Now, again, I talk about breakers, right? Now, if it's not this one, now I believe it is because why would we get lower, right? Let's let's do it this way. And I'm giving you the perspective from, you know, a higher partition. And again, let's go like 81, right? Just so we can operate a certain way. Now, right? Mind you, all these still have shared highs, 26.73 or share lows if we decide to break above. Now, we're trying to decide if, because the 81 and the 27 are way better for lower time frames, and especially, like I said before, if you're really scalping, um, the 3, 9, and the 27 are, are damn near, what's the word for it? Like, you're prestige with these. Like, you are number one with these on intraday. Watch this. All right. Now, the fact that you, like I said, we have higher objectives. So, we see that um, the higher PO3s make sense when we start looking at, you know, a bigger duration of time. Uh, and when we can expect these highs to be taken. But right now, as you can see, right, going into a Monday. And now we're popping down here on an hour chart. All right. Now, so far, like I said, you're actually trending down really, really nicely from this 81 EXT level. Pretty clean. And anybody who's asking about EXT level, this is like the external range to marker. This is like the premium of the premium. So when you're concerned about if you're buying or selling, right? It's going to be shown to you in the above dealing range because the EXT level is the order block level from the dealing range above. See? Well, my bad. Half shifted it. Let's see. There we go. See what I'm saying? This is nothing but your order block level. You need to be aware of that. That way, when it performs like what we call stop runs, right? Slightly going to a dealing range above you, smack back down. Slightly going to a dealing range underneath you, come right back up. Type shit, right? But my whole point, right? We're looking at this current. Now, 81, 27, all the lower ones, like I said, are great for intraday. And so when we dive into what the fuck is happening here versus are we expecting this higher now or are we expecting it higher later? And that's our whole point from just going from higher time frame to lower time frame and via go back levels, right? Because you can come in here. We understand that, you know, even on a smaller level, watch this. This is that EXT level. So we marked that in yellow. Now, mind you, whole time, we still have objectives, right? Like, we have liquidity here. We have open imbalances here. So, we just reached this imbalance, right? Now, this is the thing. If you took this trade here, right? Not promoting, like, again, bank holidays and things like that. Not looking to trade today. I don't trade Mondays anyway. But if you were to trade this Monday, this is exactly what you would be doing. So... Notice how uh, the Monday in general is above the Friday. See that? And this thing is clean. Like to the point where it's like a damn Jimmy Neutron. Is it really a time to sell this? This is a PM session high, right? Now, when we talk about the majors, any one of the majors, I'm talking month, high, low. Week, high, low. And dude, I've been watching uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! all morning. Bro, Kaiba really was nice, bro. 
Like, regardless of his attitude, like, you really got to, like, watch how this man duel. Like, that nigga was nice, bro. And it's to the point where I'm starting to really think about, like, how... Not saying Yugi was, like, a bad dueler, because that nigga was nice, too. But, like, not like other characters, bro. Yugi was not as nice as other niggas. And it's fucked up, because when you look at, like, uh... You know, even, like, the ability to grab, like, Egyptian guy cards and shit like that. That has no real, like, reign on your style in the game. Like, if you're ass at placing cards, like, Yugi was out here, heart of the cards, bro. Like, and the whole reason why I'm thinking about that while I'm also thinking about trading is because, uh, they're fucking battling for the fucking Shadow Realm right now. And sometimes trading feel the same fucking way. Where you're like, damn, bro. Heart of the cards. No, 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 no. I want you to have control over your trading, just how a good duelist has control over their cards. We're not leaving shit to chance, bro. You already know what's in your deck, and those are the, all the concepts that you learn on this channel. So when you say, yo, Jay, I'm having trouble with my objectives. Like, I do see that you, you, you showed me the 729 and the 243. I see the share highs. I see it's coming down, though. But you're telling me that I have targets above me. And you're saying you wouldn't be interested in the sales here? Now, me personally, like I said, if you have something to aim at, the time is good. Yes, you could play this by itself on the right day. Or day by day. But my thing is, I'm not leaving this to any sort of chance. So, I'm not about to be Yugi in this situation. I'm trying to be Kaiba, bro. Okay, so when I jump up here and I say month high, month low, week high, week low, day, and then you have session. I pay attention to these whenever these are left open, right? So age of session is completely left open. You already know that from um, your two to five is your kill zone. Boom. All right. Now, does this happen inside of two, two to five? It sure does. Do you remember what level that was? We sure do. When we trend down, what's open? Now, me personally, right? I've talked on this channel before about this. I actually really love aiming at internal range liquidity. Uh, sometimes a lot more than just regular. Only because you know... That not saying liquidity, cause liquidity is like a magnet as well. Bro, Yugi is so trash, bro. But, like, when you're looking at this, internal range liquidity, like, fair value gaps are essentially magnets, okay? These are magnets. So, a lot of times, you'll see how I used to annotate, uh, like, a lot of my rectangles and shit. And so, whether it's, um, you can always come in and apply your own, um, text or whatever, save it in a template so you don't have to type all the time. So I know a lot of people know that, but a lot of people don't know that, apparently. I don't realize it. So when you're coming inside of here, you can say, hmm, all right. Everybody got magnet. Now, it, the whole point was this has not been tapped into. By the time we got to a kill zone, I'm starting to think if we're over the previous day, buy side liquidity has already been taken out. Therefore, you need to look for sales. This is how you eliminate one side of the marketplace for now. And you start to think about what objectives are uh, below you because you've already eliminated buying. This becomes your high of, if not the day, high of the session, right? This also becomes a clean, clear magnet, and you see exactly how easy it was to get down there. No problem. Now, we're also going to look here. And again, if you're using a smaller dealing range, do you really have to... Um, like, technically, guess where this thing is going? Watch. No. Not at all. Now, why would I say that? Why would I say that? Like I said, this is why you come and you get used to understanding objectives. You need to be a reliable narrator. All right? Don't be like Yugi 
trying to have this shit talking about heart of the cards. No. No, 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 no. This shit is fully strategy based and you need to understand time. And we're operating these smaller dealing ranges. Like I said, the 27 is still wide enough to where you can see that this EQ level is probably going to be smacked only because we have liquidity down here on the power of three level. Failure to even test the, the EQ level is kind of crazy. So that's a hot spot for liquidity for sure. Because look at this one. It had no problem testing it here. See what I'm saying? No problem. It will go right up. But I'm not saying that we need to fully complete this dealing range. But all I know is that unless one of these imbalances right here tank this thing right to the upside immediately. And like I said, that shared low becomes shared high. We're not going to look at the upside right now. You're just going to completely be, look, look at that, look at that, look at that, because it's 8 o'clock, right? So we're looking to see if this high wants to play around and cause another resistance. Or uh, we're aiming to see if this power of three liquidity is a immediate objective. Now, we see it's clearly open. I mean, a succession, fail to touch an EQ. That's a hot spot for liquidity. And look at the shape of it. It's it's very uh, sideways, right? Now, actually, you know what's funny about this? It slightly looks like a market maker model. Uh, sell side. Like, here. Let's see if we can navigate that. Hmm. Now, that's interesting. Why would it look like that? Right? So, we made it to the 9 EQ. Hmm. But the way it's looking, right? And you see how we're, again, let's go down even more. All right. Let's work it. All right. Now, we understand uh, London, right? Now, again, like I said about your organization, you might have thought this was motherfucking bullish because you saw a big ass imbalance. You were impatient. Um, you probably tried to play this thing right here. And maybe we're met with a lot of high resistance. I don't like that. You don't like that. Oh, this is bullshit. Why? You take a fair value gap and you expect a reaction. It's not going to look like this. <laughs> it's not going to look like that. Uh, this fair value gap, big shit. Number two, you need to look around. I already told you that uh, the Monday's over Friday. And I'll be honest, uh, if there's a, a actual Monday I'm looking to trade, um, this would be an actual situation I would like. Um, I would only take a Monday. I'm going to be real specific. If Monday takes the opposite liquidity from the daily objective I'm looking to trade towards, if I have one, then I would take the trade. So, meaning, if Monday is underneath Friday, and I'm bullish on that asset for however long, day, two days, three days, week, month, Monday underneath Friday, yeah, I'll buy it. Fuck it. I'll buy it. Same thing here, when you see the, the Monday over the Friday, and you run it down. And look, it's not even like you don't get like a good amount of ticks. I mean, it, it, it's not small. It's not small. I like that. Now, again, you understand what we talked about. Why it came down. Uh, we can upshift it. Right? Show you what I mean. See what I'm saying? So, all this is clean, especially when we operate lower time frames for smaller uh, intraday trading. Now, mind you, like I said, this is not a good fair value gap. Don't be trying to buy that shit. Fuck that. You need to be on par with Hey, you know what? There is no buying for me because the buy side liquidity was already taken out. Therefore, I need to look for sales, which is going to be, again, low resistance in nature. Tarzan, okay? So don't come on here trying to fucking gorilla this shit. Just vibe out. Understand your dealing range more. And so especially where it's not just about dealing range, but I also tell people, and I'll say it again. I can teach this shit free on YouTube and then also teach more details off of my mentorship only because if you are not a market structure person or you get confused about every little candle in here in the marketplace, if you don't have a good grip on structure alone, 
These lows are not going to help you. They won't. You'll eventually get frustrated and feel like you're in the same boat, bro. You just have more detailed information on how to lose. <laughs> I love that. I love that. But what I'm saying is, you need to have a grip on some sort of structure and how the functions work, how time works. And have an idea of how to work it. So like I said, with this top-down analysis that we did so far, we talked about how we have higher objectives that we're expecting with these higher PO3s. But if you are just operating day at a time, you need to understand how every day has a function. Maybe you're using AMD. Maybe you're using market structure. I want you to use both, of course. And then you come in with the levels. Then you come in and say, you know what, where should I find uh, the best fair value gap that I know are going to be in my fair value gap levels? Where should I find my, you know, um, next fucking target that, again, the goalback level is going to tell you exactly where it's going to end up. But you need to understand, like, you're not just going to operate just that because even if you're just choosing to uh, trade this nine by itself and you di didn't know about this gap down here, and let's remark the gap, just a gap. Right, right here. It was a 15 minute specific fair value gap. All right. So when I jump back up here, right, and you see exactly what I mean, it's slightly outside your goal back level, but you need to be able to come in and say, you know what, I understand exactly what I'm looking at. Right. And all this is just, uh, you could tell it order block. You can tell. So watch this here. Say you come from the EXT, you pop down, you go up again, and you pop down. Now, this white candle here drops down, doesn't it? It does. Now, mind you, the whole time, the first order block here, you're going to see this come right into the order block high. And it's a perfect reaction where you're in a time and price uh, algorithm perfect PDA rate. All right. Now, this right here. Uh, this is 3.03 in the morning. This is also a rejection block. Where can you find it? In my rejection block area and look at the structure of it. Why do you have a wick here and the wick that goes to rebalance it? It goes down, right? Trades away, trades back. Trades right into the wick. It's not going to take the liquidity at the top. It's going to completely reject price right from your rejection block area people just focus on the high not the rejection block at all but the structure of this is telling you this is a clean clear uh about to be south side move and on top of that what do you have engineered underneath you that you need to pay attention to now i always get asked about liquidity like how do i know it's one to look at how do i know it's one to focus on or not um we will have liquidity week coming up maybe um, maybe this week, maybe we'll do order, uh, liquidity week this week, uh, cause we have order blocks coming up next week. So, um, let's do that. And then we'll say here, that's your order block. All right. This is sell side liquidity. So you need to be aimed towards that, not away from it. All right. Now, again, look at how. All this, when you're thinking about this being sell side now, you're not thinking about this being macro bullish and, oh, wow, that was like hard to get through. To, no, it's not. No, it's not. Cuts through like a hot knife through butter. Does not give a fuck about that shit at all. And this is a liquidity pool. All right. A lot of people who will still come from, you know, breaking bad habits and retail types of trading. Um, retail looks at this as what? support right and what did i tell you about that downside you don't fucking buy this yet or downside and what is it going to do it's going to create liquidity right so we understand that this little gap is here um 8 14 in the morning right now you tell me you can watch that for me okay now, like I said, looking at these areas here, the reason why we like this coming from an area of rejection block, bearish order block, um, and things like that, right? Um, we operate coming from a 
again, liquidity void, right? This is your liquidity void start down here. And look at this. Look at the energetic uh, nature to get down here. It's low resistance in nature. You need to stay on the sell side. It's not going to work randomly just looking for buys. It's not going to work. And again, I know a lot of people say, well, I don't understand like why it's still downside. Now, I'm upshifted, don't forget. But look at the level, all right? Look at the current level and watch where we came from. I told you, it's going to smack down and watch the draw liquidity, all right? It's going to be energetic, although there's a value imbalance right here. You see it? A little gap. That's what we call a value imbalance. It's not going to leave that open at all. It's going to immediately try to fill the shit in. That's the funny part. It does this to like uh, uh, as a like a kind of bookmark. So it could do it in two ways. Uh, if you're looking at this naturally, normally, you'll see it try to exactly fill immediately. I was going to say that. That's funny. But yeah, it's going to fill immediately a lot of times, and then your target will be met. It's normally not going to ignore the value imbalance first before the target. Now it's going to do all this dumbass shit, right? Make everybody think that this is sell uh, buy side now. But in general, right, this is how you know you're getting into structure better, bro. Right? We know damn well where this shit going. Like I said, that's why you want to watch this for me, all right? We're not there yet. Now, it's going to smack down, believe me. But the only thing is I need you to do it in a certain way. Now, it's 816 right now, all right? You're going to start to learn. Um, I have a lot more examples of this in my Discord, but... Um, it's not just about like you stalking the chart and saying, you know, blowing the fucking screen and you think it's random that it gets to the target at a certain time as well. No. Target taking or attacking of liquidity needs to happen at a certain time of the day. It's very specific. Go back and look at what time normally you see liquidity being taken. It's a certain time of the hour. Every hour. Ooh, I'm saying too much. But what I'm saying is I need you to get into, like, being more calm on the chart. You know what I'm telling you is the area of liquidity we need to focus on. Now, number two, we know it's going to get down there. You're going to have all this anxiety. Let's say you have a huge position in, and you just cannot wait to get to the fucking target to take your money out and be done. Maybe it's one of your first big trades. Maybe it's one of your, you know, you just got started, and you're like, yo, like, I, I've never been up so much money in a trade before. I know the feeling, but you need to stay calm here and you need to understand the plan. Don't just start taking shit out when you see, I mean, again, if you get to a good number and you're trading futures, bro, take it out. Yes. But what I'm saying is if you are um, understanding of the objective, bro, you're not going to be so um, trigger happy here at all. And again, if I pull it down to a one minute, watch. You see what I'm saying? It does what? Engineer more sell side liquidity equal lows. Watch the energeticness when it wants to get down underneath this low. Watch. You guys ask me all the time how I narrate like this. It just comes from watching the marketplace long enough. You already know what to expect. And it stops here for a reason. And this 830 is waiting for 830. But... Technically, it's going to do the smaller one uh, pretty quick, and this is straight ice cream, if I'm honest. All right. Watch. Ice cream. Now, people ask me also, like, another question. Um, why, like, I put funny, like, words like this on my chart a lot? Um, especially like, in my Discord, people will see, like, my images or watch my videos, and um, there's going on, like, it's about roughly 20 or so videos in my discord uh that you guys have not seen if you're only public um go watch those fucking videos man discord is fucking fire there we go like i said there's that speed like i told you and the reason why i use funny words like this like ice cream is because i teach the the kids of my family as well so like even though i don't have to come in and say like hey this is my draw of liquidity and it, it sounds all fucking rocket science-y. It doesn't sound fun to them, right? But you see exactly what I mean, right? Like, these levels are clean and clear. I'm telling you exactly what the fuck chart needs to do in order. Value imbalance. 
I have my draw liquidity. And there you go. Like I said, real speed. Real speed. There you go. Watch this. Watch. Now, it went down on my draw liquidity. Is price done? No. But what you're going to see is this. Watch. Exactly. What did I say about gold, bro? I told you about the three. I told you. This is the area you want to pay attention to. And look at the reaction right when you get there. Why is it doing that? Because you got 10 minutes until uh, 8.30. You see my point. You need to become a better, more reliable narrator. Bro, I do this shit all day. I want you guys to get to this level. Be able to call out price whenever you fucking want. People say, oh, shit. Well, like, damn. How's he doing that? You want to learn more about price? Keep watching these videos, man. All right. Well, it's time for me to go jump into Discord, uh, roll up another wood, and uh, get my uh, people situated. So, bye. I'll see you guys later.